in this video we will understand about terminal sterilization of finish pharmaceutical products in my previous videos i have discussed about d value z value f0 value for the components how it can be determined what are the values in this specific video upon the request of one of my friend i am preparing this video for the terminal sterilization of finish pharmaceutical products so let's understand we'll i'll be covering four important topics in this first is why air removal is not required in terminal sterilizer why air over pressure is required in terminal sterilization what is the signification of product d value in determining the cycle parameters and how we can develop a cycle for the terminal sterilizer so these four important factors i'll be covering in this video so please be with me so the products which are heat stable the finished pharmaceutical products which can sustain moist heat must undergo terminal sterilization it is a regulatory expectation expectations that if a finished product can be terminally sterilized then it must be terminally sterilized it should not be processed with aseptic processing so that is the regulatory expectation behind that so let's understand step by step so for the terminal sterilizer do we need to remove air no air removal is not required or even it is not desirable because anyways the container is going to get pressurized so filled container it can be vial it can be bag will have either air or nitrogen inside and when it is it when it exposed to heat the container the liquid inside the container will get vaporize the air will get expand so there will be steam air mixture inside the container it will it will create pressure so anyways it is not about removal of air anyway it's not about heat penetration it is about transferring the heat as fast as fast as possible to the container to the liquid inside the container glass container or bag container so air removal is not required on the contrary the container itself contains air so when we transfer heat when we transfer it the inside liquid will get heated it will get the liquid will convert to vapor and it will get pressurized and the pressure will be sometimes higher than the pressure inside the chamber in this case a very important factor comes in picture about pressure balancing so when we heat the container the liquid filled container the pressure will be created inside which will be which will be so high it can be higher than the chamber pressure for which or by which by the steam pressure inside the chamber so there will be a tremendous pressures inside the container to counterbalance that we need external pressure inside the chamber so air removal is not required on the contrary higher pressure is required so that it will not it will compensate the external pressure so let's understand so when we apply heat the inner liquid will get vaporized it will get pressurized so if the container is solid container such as vial with stopper then it can sustain that inside pressure but if the if the container is like flexible bag so that pressure will be so high so if we don't if we don't provide counter pressure from the steam air mixture from the chamber this container can burst so that is the that is the reason air removal is not required for the terminal sterilizer product terminal sterilized product also undergoes rapid cooling so in that case when we are rapidly cooling so the chamber pressure will drop faster than the pressure inside the container in that case if the vial if if it cannot sustain then we have to provide air over pressure during cooling in case of flexible bags if it is a flexible bag then it cannot sustain that rapid decrease in pressure inside the chamber so it can burst so in cooling phase also air over pressure is required so in order to maintain the containers integrity it is required to have air over pressure during steam sterilization as well as during cooling phase so that's why most cases steam air mixture is used for the sterilization of the finished pharmaceutical products in the rigid container like vial or flexible container like bags now why air over pressure required i just explained to maintain the container integrity air over pressure is required during the sterilization phase as well as during 
cooling phase when we are applying rapid cooling cycle now coming to the cycle time determination time and temperature parameter determination what are the important factor to be consider so that is d value of product so we must know what is the d value of product there is a method called bayer wessel method and there are other methods so using using challenge organism we can determine what is the d value of product and why it is important so if the product is thermostable but it has certain extent exposure to the temperature will can impact product assay ph color can impart particles into the product can imp can impart viable or or non viable particulate matter inside the product can impact the stability can impact the long term stability of the product so when we are heating the product these factors are getting impacted i'll repeat product potency or assay ph color it can generate particles it can impact microbial load it can impact particular non viable or non viable particle counts inside the product so these are the important factors which has to be considered when we are determining the terminal sterilization cycle for the product so d value is must to be known based on the d value we can determine to achieve six log reduction how much f0 value value will be required once we determine d value and f0 value next comes the container mapping study temperature mapping study inside the container so we have container size specific for example 50 ml container 30 ml container 100 ml container or sometimes 1000 ml container so we have to place sensors inside the container and see what is the temperature distribution profile within the container so how it can be done we have to place sensor at the various locations inside the container top middle bottom if the container is big then more location has to be covered how it helps so container mapping study usually is doing at the, done at the laboratory scale first to determine which is the hottest or coolest coolest spot inside the container once it is determined then we have to go for the chamber mapping so we have to place the load and determine what is my containers within container coolest location that is first second inside the chamber out of all my load which container or which location is getting the lowest temperature in that specific location which container is getting the lowest temperature how it helps it helps to determine overall time temperature and pressure requirement for the terminal sterilization of product so three factors what is the coolest location inside the container what is the coolest location inside the chamber and basis that we can determine how much time how much duration at what temperature we have to expose the cycle studies can be conducted at temperature like 112 degree 180 degree and 121 degree and basis that we can determine which cycle fits the best for the given specific product based on the d value of product so this is another important factor for determining the time and temperature and pressure parameter for the terminal sterilization of the product so once it is determined what are other factors which are to be considered for the determination of for the thermal validation cycle finalization to finalize the parameter for the thermal validation cycle the first is container type it is rigid wall container like wire or flexible wall container like bag then how many containers what is the fill volume how many number of trays within the load this will determine how what parameters has to be applied next will be the placement surface contact time so how we are placing the container are they in the tray are they directly placed on the container on, on the shelf are the trays are perforated all the shelf are perforated is the because this perforation is required why because there will be lot of condensation will be generated during the cycle and we are not applying any vacuum in terminal sterilization product we are not uh, uh, not uh, applying initial vacuum as well as post vacuum 
into the terminal sterilization product. So, we need perforated trays and perforated shelves for the removal of condensate. So, how is the placement? Are the perforations are big perforations, small perforations? Will it allow proper flow of steam and air throughout the chamber? What is the other factor? Other important factor is what is the viscosity of the product? Viscous product may get more time to get heated. Less viscous or aqueous product like water water based product can get less time to get heated. This depends on the what is the content of the product. So viscosity plays another important role. Fourth point is how many number of trays inside the chamber and what is their orientation. So I have seen the examples by changing the orient. If you are not getting the temperature proper inside the containers, changing the orientation such that it will facilitate proper flow of steam throughout the chamber, then you can get better orientation, better steam penetration throughout the load. So this is one more important factor. Another factor, fifth factor is what is your autoclave type? It is purely steam based or it is steam air or it is water flow, water flow based or superheated water type chamber. So this also plays a very important role that whether it is steam air mixture we are using or we are using superheated water or we are using only steam because the vials are rigid vials and it will sustain the pressure or drop in pressure during the cooling cycle. So, these are the important factors to be considered when we are determining the our thermal validation studies. I will share one of the example which I experienced that in one of the TS cycle load we are getting a very wide range of F0 value within the small chamber. So, it was expected that in a smaller chamber the F0 value should not have a very big range, it should be very uh, narrow range, very well determined range. So, what changes we made? We made the we made changes like this. We increased the perforation size of the shelf and tray to facilitate more steam flow. We created distance between the trays, reduce some of the number of the trays. So, there will be more distance between two trays and there will be better steam penetration. The blower which was there for the steam air mixture inside the chamber the blower capacity was increased, it was fitted with higher RPM blower, so it was better able to mix steam and air mixture inside the chamber. So with these changes, the range of F0 value came to narrow. What advantage it will have? It will have advantage that it will not impact the product quality, although it is within the required F0, but if you constantly maintain the value, then products CQS such as SA, impurities, any color change, pH will remain within certain range, it will remain constant, it will not have many fluctuation from one batch to other batch. So this is how it is advantageous to properly determine a terminal sterilization validation cycle. Hope this small video will help you to understand how we can determine terminal, terminal sterilization validation cycle. If you have any questions, you can put under the comment. I can answer within the comment and I can or I can make more video to further explain in detail. So thank you, thank you very much for watching my full video. If you, if you like, you can subscribe to my channel PharmaVen. Thank you.